Jason, do you know what it's time for? What time is it? It's time for... Wings of the Week! It is now time to celebrate the success of somebody in the Thrive Nation. And on today's show, we're celebrating the success of the founder of Window Ninjas, a man by the name of Gabe Salinas. This show today is called What Does the Perfect Client Look Like? What Does the Perfect Client client look like and on today's show we have gabe salinas gabe salinas with window ninjas how are you sir i am fabulous clay how are you guys doing today well two percent better because you're on the show uh one and a half percent better because wes carter's on the show for a total of three and a half percent better than normal wes carter how are you i'm amazing how are you clay hey last night did you see the patriots decimate the jets there wes i did that was uh kind of a tipping point i think for the jet season it didn't look very good gabe i had the craziest day yesterday I, I come home ready to record the show as i normally do and i look to my left and there is the secretary of commerce sean copeland in my man kit and i think to myself it's not often the secretary of commerce is on my uh in my man cave and i haven't seen him in almost 1700 shows and then I look to my right, and I see Senator James Lee Wright, who I've never met before. It's not often I have the senator in my uh, man cave. And then I uh, start going through our interview outline, and I realize we got the lieutenant governor on the show. And then I start to realize Dr. Zellner's coming over. And then I see Z do a handstand, and then I see the, oh, yeah. the, the Patriots beat the Jets. And now today continues this unicorn event. Our perfect client is on the show. So, Gabe, let's start here. Where did you first hear about uh, us and what we do here at the Thrive Time Show and the uh, one-on-one uh, Make Your Life Epic coaching that we do? Uh, I found you from a friend of mine who, you, who listened to your podcast quite often, and he turned me on to you. And as I started listening, um, I understood uh, about your coaching services and, and that's pretty much how we found you and did you find us on like iheart or spotify or, or where, 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 where do you where, where, what uh, platform do you listen on um i think it was the itunes ipod or the podcast app got it okay so you're on itunes and uh your <laughs> first impression when you listen to it were you going this is terrible except for when Wes talks i mean was that your initial thought or what, what did you think when you first heard your first oh, absolutely. show absolutely absolutely that's exactly what i thought now <laughs> I just got a chuckle, and I, I was just so in-depthly enthralled with what you were talking about. You were super motivating, and it seemed like everything you were talking about was just relating directly to what I had been dealing with, with in the business world. So uh, it just sparked my interest, and then we just started listening to you pretty much every day. Every, every chance we got, I'd, we'd listen to you. Now, we, um, uh, the listeners out there, to give them context, where in the country do you live right now? Uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. So we're on the East Coast, Southeast North Carolina, right at the beach. And what is your uh, business called? Window Ninjas. Now, the listeners out there might not know this. Some of them know this, the more SEO savvy people. One way that we can thank a guest like you is if we all go to your domain directly right now, it makes your site rank mm -hmm. higher in Google. What's your domain right now so we can make your site rank higher? It is windowninjas.com. I'm pulling it up, Window ninjas.com do you guys teach um how do you guys teach martial arts students how to climb through windows or what do you guys do actually we teach them how to break windows oh nice no. wow, wow. Uh, <laughs> we are the squeegee masters so we are uh ninjas when it comes to the art of window cleaning so you are you are win window cleaning experts that's what we are and we do window cleaning pressure cleaning and offer gutter cleaning services as well and with our um, coaching program, we tend to, to rotate around from different, different, to different coaches for a variety of reasons. Um, one is it's accountability. Two, it has to do with speed. Three, it has to do with availability. There's a lot going on there. But Andrew's worked with you for a while, and I just wanted to go through, uh, Andrew, the 10 most common pain points. And what we'll do is I'm going to tee up the pain point. I'm going to then ask you why you're able to get it done when most people won't or can't. And then I'd like for Wes Carter to chime in on kind of his editorial comments because he's an attorney but he's also a business guy works with business owners and i want to get your take wes as to why you think people won't do it sounds like a good plan so here we go gabe um getting google reviews let's just start right there gathering objective reviews from real clients it's not something that i want to do it's not something i'm excited about doing but it is something that i have to do because google is in charge you choose to get 
Google reviews. Do you have like a psychological problem or what causes you to get reviews? Even though I mean, I'm looking at your YouTube video, you're a beautiful man here on your website, just beautiful man. What causes you okay. to want to get reviews? Do you have a psychological problem? Do you hate yourself? I mean, do you love money that much? What's causing you to get reviews when a lot of people know what they need to do but refuse to do it? Um, I'm just driven. I'm super competitive. I always want to be number one, and I want to be the best. And when somebody tells me that in order to do uh, X, Y, Z, I'm going to do X, Y, Z to be the best. And so by your coaching and with y'all's knowledge, then um, the number one thing we needed to do was become number one on Google and in Google Maps and get the most reviews. So we have just made it a conscientious effort to do so every single day. And how many locations do you have now? Uh, we have 10 locations. Do you have any employees that work for you, or, or do you just do it all yourself? Are you in 10 places at one time? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not that uh, ninja-esque. But, um, yeah, we have many employees. We have uh, a lot of managers, um, one in each place or in, in each location for every city that we're in, and they have uh, employees as well. So, um, yeah, lots of people. Wes, not that Satan needs an advocate, but let's just say that the, you could be the devil's advocate here. All right. There are people out there that say, I want to get reviews. But I can't. Mm. Yeah. What What have you found as a business owner? What's the challenging part about getting reviews? What's the the because you're you're an attorney. You guys represent huge names. I mean, your law firm has represented guys like uh, Pastor T D Jakes, Pastor Craig Rochelle, Joyce Meyer, huge names. Um, what's what, What's the difficult part about getting reviews? Well, I think there's a couple difficult part. One, you get mired down in your day to day responsibilities, and you forget or you neglect it. Um, two, you make a big push, and if you don't stay on top of it, it doesn't stay top of mind. So let's say you have a big employee meeting, and you say, okay, we're going to do this. We're if doing do, it. If you don't do it, you're in trouble. Come on. Or if you do do it, I'm going to bonus you or whatever. The, Come on. You know, and then it just fades off because you said uh. oh, fires happen. You're putting out fires. And so that and then just combined with some particular professions, probably attorneys, one, doctors, I think – they're naturally reticent to ask for a review. They feel that it's is so unprofessional. True. So and, true. And you have to get over that. So true. And also, I want to remind the listeners out there, 40 years ago, most medical professionals thought it was illegal or unethical to advertise at all. Same way with lawyers, yeah. So this is uh, CPAs out there. I'm just trying to help you. So now let's get into this next thing that our perfect client does every single time. So one is getting those reviews. Two is you show up mentally. What? and physically for the calls. Now, we're calling you we're halfway across the United States, and we don't want, I don't want any more than 160 clients. And I'll tell you why. Because there's not that many Gabe Salinas' out there. I want there to be. I've prayed about it. But we have 25 to 30 people a week reach out. And if you're listening right now and you're reaching out and you're a knucklehead, don't reach out to me. Mm. But people will go, okay, I'm going to call you at 4 o'clock. And then like 6 o'clock rolls around and they go, oh, my gosh, I missed that appointment. And it's not one time, Gabe. They, they, they say, we need to reschedule. So you reschedule again and they go, ah, something came up. Ah, ah. And we're talking about the initial just assessment. We're not even talking about the coaching. And great clients like you and Aaron Antis with Shaw Homes, really all of our clients, which is why I'm so picky on who I work with, are the kind of people I would like to have over, over at my house. Last night we were watching the Patriots game, and I have a lot of clients over at my house because I like these people. And they're fun people. What is wrong with you? Why do you show up to the appointments and actually do your homework? Well, it's because I follow a schedule. I plan my day Come on. every single week. I know exactly what I'm going to do every single day. And I don't let other people dictate my schedule. So if somebody comes in my office and says, do you got a minute? The answer is no. There it is. If my door's open at a certain time during the week, that means I got a minute for you. Otherwise, mm. don't come knocking on my door because I'm in the middle of doing something else. And this is, but yeah, I pretty much plan and schedule my day, do. and I live my life by a schedule, and it just works. And what I hear, I hear from pastors – we had two pastors who are not clients, who have never been clients, who came to a conference. And if you're listening and you're that pastor, you know who you are. And they said to me, "You, I hear that you work with an attorney who represents a certain mega church guy, mega, huge church. And I said, I do hire the same attorney. He's a client. I'm, you know, I don't work with that church at all, but we you know, share a common connection. And they go, 
I hear the guy eats the same food every day, literally keeps the same schedule every day, and is an ass. This is pastor to pastor. And I said, an ass? How's he an ass? He's like, he literally eats the same food every day, keeps the same schedule every day. Every, and and, and I, I heard if you're at that church and you, you go over your time, your allotted time, you get in trouble. And I'm like, what do you do at your church? He says, well, when the Spirit's flowing, sometimes we just go into the next service. I said, so the second service might be shorter or longer than the first. Well, absolutely. How many members do you have? 300, he says. I'm like, well, if somebody has 300 times more people than you have, perhaps they're doing something right. And he goes, yeah, but I think he's kind of an ass. So, Wes, you deal with alphas at Winners and King. Yeah. You deal with the heads of companies, best-selling authors, very successful people, your own bosses, your own partners. Your own, you're a partner now, so your own partners. Yeah. These guys are intense dudes. Mike yeah. King, great guy. Want him on your team. You yeah. want him on your team. Mr. Winners, you want him on your team. Mr. King, you want him on the team. Talk to me about that, Wes. Why do people have a hard time saying no to grow like, like some pastors would encourage us to do? Well, I think that some people have this preconception in their head that if you don't have you can't have compassion and accountability at the same time hmm. so just because i'm going to hold my people accountable or i'm going to hold myself accountable to a schedule or i'm going to hold myself accountable to perform in an excellent manner doesn't mean i'm devoid of compassion i mean i i think those people would tell you it's not compassion to have a failing corporation or a failing church and your employees are unemployed, you know? So there's two sides of that coin where you're being a good steward of what you have. And part of doing that is building in responsibility and accountability into your practices. Now, my understanding is that the uh, Patriots this week suspended Michael Bennett, one of their best defensive players mm. for a week for conduct detrimental to the team. Now the Patriots, I didn't see him lose versus the Jets. I didn't see the, the, the things fall apart. And every week, Bill says, you know, you got to follow the system, follow the. And if you don't, you're not on the team very long. Antonio Brown, how's it going? What's it like not being on the Patriots? I mean, he, he, you can come on the team. They got a rule quit texting. You can't text. You can't use social media. You can't stir. Even if you're on the Patriots, no drama. That's the rule. He stirs up drama. He's off the team. Yeah. Is Bill Belichick a bad guy? No. In fact, most guys who retire, like Teddy Bruschi, um, guys who are very, very successful will say Bill Belichick's one of the coolest guys of all time. But you got to have that compassion and that accountability. This third thing you do, and this is very controversial, Wes. Okay. Gabe actually pays his people. Oh, no. No, 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 no. It's bad. It's bad. He's paying his people. Andrew, you've seen this. Wes, I see a lot of people that are like, I'm going to make every single person commission only and never have an employee. There are people that work for him who get paid every week. But you see this in small business. Yeah. Where everyone's trying to convince yeah. everybody to work for free, selling that dream. No one's getting paid. Gabe, why do you actually pay your people? Uh, probably because of this thing called the law. Oh. And uh, I really don't feel like going to jail. Um, but I pay my people, <laughs> and I pay them well because oh. I got to. If I don't, they're not going to do their job, and they're not going to do their job well. So I want them to all be exceptional employees, so we pay them, and then we incentivize them to do even more. Wes? Yeah, so if you don't – you're exactly right, Gabe. If you don't pay your employees, one of two things are going to happen. You're going to get stuck with the people who are okay making a little amount of money, and they're going to loaf through their job. Or two, you're going to lose all of your good talent because they're ambitious and they have higher dreams in life than making minimum wage. And so to retain your talent and to attract talent to come in, you have to pay competitive wages. Now, this is another area, uh, Gabe, that's very, very offensive. Very, very offensive. This is this probably, Andrew, I know Gabe's going to hang up here because let me, let, me, let me tell you what he doesn't do. Let me tell you one thing. Uh, most people in the world, now I want, I want the listeners to wrestle with the words that are coming out of my mouth. Wrestle with, wrestle with these words. In America, we know that, Nine out of 100 people at any given time will call themselves self-employed. They're, they're a small business owner. Nine out, of, nine out of 100, right? So we don't have 100% of our population that's self-employed, about 9%. Now, of that 9% that classifies themselves as self-employed, nine out of 10 startups fail. Hmm. And you go, well, why? That means you have a point zero zero eight one percentage chance of being successful as a business owner when you think about the math there nine out of 100 start a business and nine out of 10 fail 
And I'm going to tell you why it is. And I know the secret. You know the secret. I will tell you. I want to know the secret. It's because people are an emotional mess. And then they scale it. So you, Gabe, do not put the emotion in front of the motion. As an example, you do your crap whether you want to or not. You keep to a schedule whether you want to or not. You show up when you're sick whether you want to or not. But most people are con- entirely controlled by their amygdala, the emotional processing center of their brain. So they have to skip work at their own job. Mm. They, I see contractors that own their own business. I see your competitors, Gabe, that own their own window installation company, window cleaning company, something in the window field, and they will take the payment from the client and not deliver the service. I see this all the time, and Wes can get into the, into the legal aspects of this, but why do you keep your emotions in check, and how do you do it? Uh, well, it's a challenge. Sometimes people make you... Uh extremely frustrated and it can be easy to fly off the handle and and just um make the wrong move so you just got to keep yourself in check and that's exactly what i do every single day i just keep myself in check because it's the appropriate thing to do and um you got to be in control if you're going to be a leader you got to be a leader that's in control and 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 keep your emotions in check um you know i I think it was andrew that said uh emotion take the take the uh He's got a little saying for the emotion. Um, um, yeah, well, emotions get um, in the way of motion. That's a big problem. The emotions get that, in the way. I, yep, I say this it. every day to our team, constantly. Yeah, and you, you show yep. me someone that's got a company that's just constantly in litigation, getting sued, suing other people, and nine times out of ten, that's the problem is they're running it with their emotions. Either they're making decisions not based on the facts, based on emotions. As you mentioned, they're flying off the handle. They're firing somebody without even thinking about it, or they're making, you know, they're just saying, I'm not going to do that, even though they got a contract. And it's a, so it's a, it's a very poor way to run a business and a very good way to get your business in a lot of trouble. And I can say this on behalf of, on behalf of uh, Team Alpha here. Team Alpha, we're, we're a small team. Uh, hi, um, I'm Team Alpha. And, uh, you know, Chuck Norris, Team Alpha, Schwarzenegger, Team Alpha, um, but, you know, Tom Brady, Team Alpha. And I've seen Tom Brady, I've seen him throw a helmet. I've thrown a water water bottle in a meeting before. I've done it. The difference between the the is it I, I remember telling John, John, I'm gonna throw the printer this morning. And he's like, Really? I'm like, yeah, someone needs to see it fly. It just has to be done. And he's like, Really? So we thought through what, what will it sound like when it hits the ground and these sorts of things. Um, and there's a time, and there's a Bible and the Bible talks about there's a time for righteous anger. I mean, Jesus was a table flipper. Yeah, he's flipping tables everywhere. He's flipping, you know, he flipped the tables. There's a time for righteous anger, but Gabe, you do a good job of keeping it in check. Now, this next thing you do that's crazy because again, anger and, and a sense of urgency can be cousins. You have a sense of urgency about everything you do. Where does that come from? Did you hit your head on the toilet seat? Did you fall off a tree? Were you raised by angry, hateful people? Why? Why do you have a sense of urgency? Because I'm in a you know, I'm in a race with myself. How fast can I get from point A from point A to point B in the straightest line and beat everybody else? That's mm. just my inner drive. I've always been that way, and that's 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 what that's what I live by every single day. And uh, I don't want to wake up 50 years old or 60 years old and still chugging along at the same old job. I just want to have uh, all of my dreams and goals accomplished well before then, so that I can go on and live my life in the in the next fashion as I choose to do so. What does and I don't I don't want you to share any you know dreams that are inappropriate I mean you know but what are what are some dreams where you, you could share with the listeners maybe a dream you have a financial goal or something that you, you that you wouldn't mind sharing you know something where it's maybe not over the line that you know it's, what, what are you putting you out there too much um well I keep my financial goals to myself got it uh, one of our goals that we have me and my wife is um, our youngest son is going to be out of the house in five years and our goal is once he's out of the house and in college we'd pretty much like to be done. We'd like to be able to travel around more, go see the world, work maybe five hours, 10 hours a week at the most, and just go enjoy ourselves. We've been together a long time. We've raised two good kids. And, uh, you know, it's just time to move on to the next phase and just start enjoying life. You know, one of my goals I have, it's pretty ambitious, though, but, Wes, you can only hope. You know, you just, You've got a dream. Uh, the, one of the dreams I have that I, I talk about a lot that I've actually been able to do is I try not to see any humans – at all who I don't like like this has been a goal of mine and I have had 
really good success with that this year. I mean, it has been. Last year was really good, too. But this year's I mean, so Saturday and Sunday, I get up at 3, you know, in the morning. I do podcasts, get stuff ready to go, hang out with the kids. We live behind a wall, swimming around, splishy splashing. Went to Atwoods, Hobby Lobby. You don't find a lot of people I don't like at Atwoods. Atwoods is very right of center, cowboy, conservative, guns and gold. I mean, it's a good place to go get an AR. It's a good place to go and talk about George Bush and then get your chicken feed, chicken feed. And then you might say stuff like, hey, uh, uh, does anybody here know who Ronald Reagan is? And everyone says yes. It's just a lot of like it's a lot of that pro conservative, you know, that libertarian stuff, Gabe, you know, that entrepreneurship, you know, good old boy trucks everywhere, trucks everywhere. It's kind of that place of um, and I go yeah. to Atwoods where it's kind of more liberal. Well, I go to over to, to go over to a guitar center. It's more liberal, but we talk about musical instruments. We don't talk politics over there. You don't bring it up. Everyone over there is left of center, but they know how to use an 808. They know how to mix something. They all got long hair. They all live with their moms. I love that store. So Guitar Center, I like Atwoods. But I kind of know where I'm going to go. Hobby Lobby, it's Christian music everywhere. Um, but I want to just surround myself with the kind of people I like. Wes, do you have some goals that you have that keep you motivated? or, or, or I mean, Are you one of those sick freaks that has goals? Well, yeah, I mean, I have goals. I mean, I, I think part of it is mostly long-term goals. I'm not so much a short-term goal guy, mm. uh, but, you know, in my line of work, if you're not careful, you're always chasing the billable hour, and you can just work from dawn to dusk, from sleep until, you know, you wake up and then you go to bed working. So it's more of a long-term, let's find a way to scale the law business so that I am not stuck doing hourly billing behind a desk to make a living. So it's growing the business side of it. It's, you know, training lawyers underneath us to be good attorneys. So it's kind of the building of the business that's my dream so that one day I can You're like Belichick. Kind of, kind of like Gabe just said, you can you can manage it, you can grow it and one day you can just peek in every once in a while and make sure everything's going well Very and Belichick do some tra- yeah, do some traveling and do some other fun stuff that doesn't involve work all the time. Now, uh, for the listeners out there who are looking for a, an attorney, I recommend you get an attorney before you need one uh, because you want to have that relationship there. And uh, Wes has asked me just to give out the website, wintersking.com, and to not give out his cell phone number anymore. And he asked me, uh, Gabe, nicely, and I, with no exaggeration, at least two dozen times <laughs> over a two- to three-year window of time, Gabe, where he says, hey, 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 I appreciate the referral, you know, and I appreciate that, but could you not give out my cell phone number? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Absolutely. I'm always moving fast. So I didn't write it down and it didn't click in my head. And he's like, hey, hey, appreciate those two or three referrals. And that was very nice. Thank you. But can you have them just not call my cell phone? I'm like, oh, yes. And I kept doing it. And then finally, there was like a moment where he said, could you not give out my cell phone? And I thought to myself, perhaps he doesn't want me to give out his cell phone. I think maybe I've heard this before. But I grew up without, I without I've money. Heard it myself. You know how like you, you grow up without money, Gabe, and, and if you don't have money or maybe you start a business from nothing, you kind of always are hot for the deal. Yeah. And I kind of, oh, yeah. in my primal hot for the deal mind, I'm like, I'm going to wreck this guy's marriage and his schedule and his meetings, and I'm going to just give out his cell phone number so he can make more money at more billable hours. But after being around him, upon further review, it has occurred to me that he cares about his family more and he cares about structure and systems. And so this leads me to my next point. You say no to stuff that doesn't matter. Mm. You're not out there, Gabe, spending all night debating with somebody on Facebook about whether the, the review was warranted or not. You're not debating with employees you fired six months ago about the meaning of life. You only focus on what matters. What's wrong with you, Gabe? Why are you on Facebook debating politics? Oh man, because I'm a sick freak. What is what is Facebook? Who who has time for Facebook? I love it. Yeah, there's a new app I'm working on called Bookface, <laughs> and it's a thing where entrepreneurs, uh, Gabe, uh, you can feel free to steal this idea. When you log on to any app, Bookface sends you an immediate notification via text that says "Shut the hell up and get back to work." What was Bookface? <laughs> what was it that Belichick said in that yeah, press so. conference? He said, "What is the uh, those kids use Snapface?" He, he actually, uh, I'll read you Bill Belichick quotes real quick. These are Bill Belichick um, quotes on social media. Truly um, awesome. Now, Bill Belichick, just so you know, if you type in Burj Najarian, Gabe, or anybody out there, Burj, B-E-R-J, Najarian, N-A-J-A-R, 
I A N Burj Najarian. Um, I actually come up top now in Google for Burj Burj's name, and Burj is the man who is Bill Belichick's personal handler, and he's the one who rejects me. There he is, Wes. You can see him, and so Burj shuts me down. Your Pull arch there, nemesis. Andrew. So uh, Burj shuts me down on a consistent basis, and so Burj's job is to make sure that Bill Belichick only has to worry about football. Mm. Burj deals with lunch, interview requests, complaints. Any type of issue. Andrew, you pulling up there, Burj Najarian? You got to pull that up there. I want West. There, scroll down real quick here. Images, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's pulling it up. Burj Najarian. We're getting it. It's coming. I see it. I want it. I really want it. There he is, Burj. So Burj Najarian uh, makes Bill Belichick to get – he got him to a place where he doesn't have to deal with all this crap. So this is Bill Belichick, um, a reporter. Let me, let me cue this up here. Sean Lee visited you as a kid? There's a reporter asking Bill Belichick about social media. When we talk about you, yeah. What was that connection? We were on snap face there when we were talking about that. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Well, he's a Pittsburgh guy, you know, friend of a friend kind of thing. So he's at, again, he's talking about snap face. Now, he, this is another Bill Belichick <laughs> one here. Let me see if I get Showing it. a fondness. Tablet well, I can't find. Uh, there's a clip here where Bill Belichick says that he doesn't insta chat or snap face. Um, it's truly impressive, and so I just think if you're out there today and you're thinking, "Gosh, the truly great amongst us are definitely on social media all day." That's how they're making their money. No, they're not. Mm -hmm. Wes, have you noticed that most successful entrepreneurs spend the least amount of time on social media, and the ones who make the least spend the most on social media? Have you noticed uh, this parallel? There is. I mean, if you're if you're using it for PR purposes, <laughs> you probably should have a PR person doing it for you. Mm. And that's not a CEO type of job, you know. And if you're a small business and you have to dabble in it, but the problem is people don't dabble. People sit at their desk and next thing you know, they've been flipping through Facebook for an hour. Right. Accomplished nothing. Right. Not posting for your business. Not They're with their spouse, not growing of the business. Babies and kitties and you know, oh. posting memes and it just it has a tendency to suck your time out. It's, it's it's the video games of this generation. In my generation, people would spend all it day is the playing video PlayStation. Game. It you is. Know? It's the video game. Now everybody's stuck to Instagram and TikTok and whatever else is going on out there, and it, it just it's a waste of time. Now, Bill Belichick. Um, this is a really funny. I was listening to an interview with him, and they were talking to him about the game metrics and analytics, where you. Gabe, look at all these stats, and it says this guy runs a 4-4-40, and he's 6-1. Therefore, it's a mathematical good decision to draft him. And Bill refuses to look at that stuff. He likes to look into their eyes, at their soul, and then he calls references. And he asks their high school football coach, and he asks their family and their friends and their neighbors, is this guy late? And they're like, what? He runs a 4-3. Is he late? Yeah, he runs a 4-3, but he's late. Who isn't late? Okay, thank you. I'm done here. Is this guy late? No, he's not. Does this guy have some sort of faith? I don't care if it's Christianity or what. Is he a Mormon? Is he a Christian? Does he have a belief in our country? Does he have principles? Yeah, he's super military. Okay, thank you. But he asks those kind of things. He's into principles. But this is Bill Belichick's comments on social media this year. Here we go. One, on social media overall, I don't Twitter. I don't my face. I don't yearbook. On social media part two, ask him more about social media, the role it has. He says, Twitter account, InstaFace, I don't have any of that. On social media, part three, they continue. I don't know my face, your face, InstaFace. <laughs> on social media, part four, I'm not on SnapFace, not too worried what they put on InstaChat. On everything related to, he said, on anything else related to football, he says, you get the job done or you don't. And then when asked about why a player didn't perform, uh, on the key to success, do your job. On long snappers, knowing you have a good backup long snapper allows you to sleep good at night. <laughs> on advanced metrics, what the hell is that? On Tom Brady, um, he's a good player. We have a lot of good players, though. On the player's status, whether they're going to play, I'm not a football coach. He'll be playing. Or he says, I'm, I'm not a doctor. He'll be playing. So it's just Bill Belichick. Yeah, and some of that's just Bill being Bill with his sense of humor. But the underlying principle there is you can't you can't worry about that stuff. Um, Distraction. You know, and yeah, it's it's distracting. Or people are so worried what other people are saying about them on those 
platforms yep. that you even get further distracted and you're distracted from your goals and your goal should not be how popular am I? How many likes am I getting? It should be how much money am I making? How much, how well am I doing for my family? How are my relationships with my friends? How's my faith? Not likes and clicks and those kinds of things that are outside of that realm. Now uh, we have these final, these final pain points, these final things that Gabe Salinas gets right that most people get wrong that makes him the perfect client. So I'm going to read off four more. Here we go. We're going rapid fire. The final, the final three minutes here, Wes. Here we go. The group interview. You do the group interview. Talk to me about the group interview, how that's helped your life. Uh, group interview always is a fun experience to do. Um, we do the group interview every week. We do ours on Wednesday, and we do it in every single one of our locations. So all 10 locations do a group interview each week. We're always looking for great people. Um, if we don't find them, that's okay. There's always next week. But what's cool is if we find somebody that we like and we don't have a position for them, we just keep them in our pocket. And when we're ready to let somebody go or it's like somebody walked in my office today and gave me their notice. There we go. Not a problem. I got somebody to replace you. You know, we're never missing a beat. I came in on, um, I think it was Thursday morning, and I had a disgruntled employee who just wanted to be, you know, very argumentative and combative. And we just walked her out the door and said, I just hired somebody last night to replace you. So it's mm. just a win-win. It's Love super it. awesome. And it's fun to do. You can we, we do the Bill Belichick as well. We ask them all kinds of crazy questions. But really, I'm just looking at their soul. I'm looking in their eyes. I'm oh, looking yeah. at a man to man or woman to man. And, and I'm digging deep as to who they are, really. And uh, that's how we find good quality people. Now, Gabe, it's, hard to, it's, hard to, it's hard for those employees to uh, – or those, those, those people to, uh, to hide when they're in a group interview setting as well. Now, Gabe, I'm going to read off for you reasons why I've had to fire people let's say in the past five years, but no more recently than three years ago. That way, it's, I'm safe, okay? And I won't mention anything about this person, mm-hmm. but I'm going to re- mention a reason why I had to fire somebody, and I want you to one-up me, and we're going to go back and forth until you're stumped. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. I had to fire a guy for ordering a prostitute at work. Coming out of the gates mm. hot. Mm, that was hot. That was pretty, uh, was pretty impressive. Um, I had to fire a guy for digging through a homeowner's purse looking for pills. I had to fire a female employee for accidentally sinking her phone to the airdrop and not the whatever to the airdrop, thus showing her nude photos to our editing staff. Mm, That's another good one. I had to fire a girl... Because she liked to wear too short of a skirt, and she would not wear any undergarments. And when she finally bent over the top of her desk and flashed my accounting manager, that was pretty much the last straw for her. I had to fire a guy who, on his first day at work, said, I'm so sorry, I thought I was going to start tomorrow. So the next day, he misses then the next day, I tell him, I get him on the phone. I said, hey, I want to make sure you know you've had two misses. It's not going to be a good fit. And he says, what day is it? And I said, today is Tuesday, and you missed Monday and Tuesday. He goes, oh, I thought it was Friday. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that? That's a thing. <laughs> No, I, I, uh, I have, I have, I I have more. I, I have more. I, I have more. I got any I, no, no, I have more. I want to keep going because this is therapeutic. And you could, you could interrupt me too. You can give me worse or better. Just keep because this is the listeners out there never hear this stuff. I fired a guy for bringing a loaded AR assault rifle and leaving it in the hotel room that was checked into my name at the Omni Hotels. I got a hotel room for him. He was a DJ. He left a loaded AR in the room, and when the hotel staff found it, obviously they called me. All these crazy things happened, and his issue was he wanted to know if it why what it why he was in trouble if they didn't have a sign that said you can't bring loaded weapons to the Omni Hotel. That would be why I fired a guy. Mm-hmm. So we fired a guy because he liked to do a certain kind of drug, and he became addicted to it, and then he ended up making some inappropriate comments. And sending some inappropriate text messages to one of our area managers. I fired a guy who stole another man's coat who he sat next to at work. 
So the guy next to him says, that's my coat. He says, no, it's not. He says, it is my coat. He opens up the pocket, and his name is written in the coat. (laughs) (laughs) It sounds like maybe we need a show on how to make better hiring decisions. These are all DJs. I could go on for weeks. Yeah, The DJ industry is a factory, a festival of lights. I mean, so again, uh, the group interview makes it possible to fire people. Wes, where do people get so stressed out about firing people? From a legal perspective, where do they get it wrong? Because people are out there being plagued by bad people right now. Well, I, I think I think it's 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 actually wise to have some nervousness about firing someone because you need to do it in the right way and you need to be careful about the circumstances. But at the same time, it, it's just not worth keeping bad people on. And if you prepare correctly and you go through the process correctly, you can do it with a minimal amount of risk. But doing it willy nilly and not having any idea what the rules are or the risk or the landmines, that's where people just say, hey, all caution to the air, you're gone. I don't care you know, what the circumstances are or what contract we might have or what disability you might have brought up. You know, just there's so many landmines. You just landmines. You have to educate yourself about those and so you can do it without getting scared. Wintersking.com, folks. Wintersking.com. You can learn more about Wes Carter right there. Tracking what matters. Uh, tracking what matters as we come down the home stretch. This is pain point number eight. A lot of people track exclusively what doesn't matter and they don't track what matters. A lot of people say, Clay, I had a 1,000 people on my website this week, and I didn't get any leads that filled out the form. And I say, how many called you? And they go, I don't know. And I say, so you have no idea how many people called you? Nope. Okay, so you don't know if anybody called you. Nope. So then upon further review, they're like, oh, I got 10 calls, but nothing from the website. Did you ask the people if they found you on the website, or did they just wake up and via osmosis or ESP they felt motivated to call you? I mean, did they wake up with a random idea to call you, or did they actually find you in Google? Why do you track what matters over there at the Window Ninjas and not focus on things that don't matter? Well, because it's important. It's We need to know that information. Uh, we, we track all of our leads. Um, you guys helped me with that. And, and, and tracking all of our leads and seeing exactly where our leads are coming from allows us to see a multitude of things. For example, we know exactly what the close rate is for certain salespeople. We know exactly what the customer acquisition cost is um, for, you know, various forms of advertising. It also tells us exactly what advertising is or is not working and allows us to take our money out of one venue that we may have budgeted for and then put it into another that is actually doing way better. So, but tracking all those things, if you're not tracking those things and you, you you're just kind of walking around in a, in a mm. loop, not knowing where you're going. I mean, you, you really have no direction. But those tracking things just like your leads can, can put you on the right path. And the path is, you know, the promised land. And the promised land is how much money are you going to put in the bank or how much free time are you going to have with your family. Pain point number 10, sacrificing unneeded sleep for success. I'm not talking about sleeping two hours a day. Calm down. I'm just saying you're not sleeping in watching cartoons. A lot of people, you know, are sleeping nine or ten hours a day, or they're watching TV for three hours while not sleeping. They go, they try to go to bed at ten, quote unquote, and until one o'clock they're watching TV, not going to bed or watching TV. Talk to me about sacrificing sleep or watching TV, just wasting time. Well, time is the most valuable asset that we have. I mean, that's the one thing in life that you never get back. So it doesn't make any sense to me for you to sleep your life away or to spend 8, 10, 11, 12 hours a day on Snapchat or Facebook or anything else like watching television. I mean, that kind of stuff's just not important to me. And I'm one of those crazy people that just fortunately, I don't really have to sleep a lot. So it doesn't matter if I go to bed at 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock, I'm going to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. It's just natural to me. So, you know, sleep, I just don't get people that have to sleep for more than five four five six hours it just doesn't make any sense to me well i am one of those people oh and the controversy starts so i, I will speak for for my my my, <laughs> team pe- my people team normal um i do I, I do have to have a good solid eight hours of sleep and dr and, z would tell us six to eight is yeah. what we, he owns a sleep but center you know. what that means is you have to sacrifice even more so to get the eight hours of sleep that means you cut out more tv you cut out more of the extra stuff and uh, you just have to make a little bit more sacrifice because if you don't, I'm going to be, you know, I know myself well enough. No, I'm going to be grumpy. I'm going to be short. I'm yep. not going to feel well. I'm not going to be as productive. Um, so you cut out a, a show here, a, a movie here, a conversation there, and you get your sleep if you need it. My wife and some people like, you know, like you guys can yep. operate on low amounts of sleep. I, I'm, I'm jealous. I'm, six. I'm jealous. I'm, I'm six to sevens where I like Clay, to be. Hey, 
I'd, I'd like to ask you a little question, Clay. Sure. Do you? Let me, because this is what I have to do. I forgot. Now, do you actually? Do you end up taking a fifteen-minute nap or like a just a fifteen-minute break in the day? I find I, myself doing that about three o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm ready to go again. I don't. Um, let me just tell you what I I do. Um, again, I want to make, make sure all the listeners know that I want to balance it out real quick. Um, I my partner, Doctor Zellner, who's not on today's show, he owns a sleep center. So there's medical science that shows that. Most people need somewhere between six and eight hours of sleep. Six to eight. So go see a sleep center specialist. Don't take my word for it. Just go see somebody. But let's say they come back and say you need eight hours of sleep. All right? For me, I found six is what I need. But let's just say they said eight. What are all the things you need need to stop doing to make time to get that sleep? And then John D. Rockefeller, who was the world's wealthiest man, always took a nap right at noon. Every day at noon. A half hour. (laughs) Now, every time I take a nap, I wake up with a weird smell in my mouth. I feel like I'm kind of sweaty because I was went to sleep, and I feel gross. So then I would need to, like, re-shower. You know what I mean, Wes? I need to, like, do the re... Yeah. I feel kind of gross when I nap. Yeah. So I'm not, I don't do well with that. But The Rock did that. He would, he would nap every day exactly at noon, and he would never work after 5. And he's the world's wealthiest man, but he never was distracted. Everything was scheduled. So for me, I don't do the nap thing. Um... But I also don't do the eat thing. During the day, unless somebody is intentional about getting me food, I just don't eat. And if I wasn't married to my wife, I wouldn't eat at home either. either. It's like when I was, you know, single or whatever, I just don't. I'll just eat, like, chicken. The same meal every day. So I'm, like, a sick person. I got problems. My wife's normal, and she's like, you know, hey, why don't we have, you know, something different? Like, the kids pointed out to me their night, Gabe. They said, Dad, where do you want to go eat tonight? And I said, let's go to Mr. Mambo's. They go, Dad... We've been to Mambo's perhaps 20, 25 times this month. And I'm like, and? And? And they go, Dad, can we go somewhere else? And I'm thinking, well, well why? So I like routines, Gabe. That's my deal. That's my natural flow, which is why running a business has always been easy for me. But vacations, <laughs> naps, <laughs> movies I haven't seen yet are all scary ideas. Now, movies I've seen yet, oh, to watch that again and really find the comedy in that Adam Sandler movie, that deep comedy, the little nuances and Christmas yeah. Vacation with Chevy Chase, where like the other day I watched it again. Gabe, have you seen Christmas Vacation? Oh yeah. Do you Many like times. that? Do you like that movie? Oh yeah, it's a great movie. It's a classic. Wes, do you like that movie? I do. Do you really? Yes. Well, there's a scene in that movie that I saw the other day for the first time. I've seen the movie probably thirty times. Mm-hmm. I'll cue it up for you real quick here, Gabe. This is my gift to you. This is a scene where he's Chevy Chase is chopping down the he's t- trimming the tree to bring the tree into the house. Right. And here he is. This is the scene. Establishing shot of his house. He's going to come out of the garage wearing a hockey mask in just a moment. The neighbors arrive, played by Mrs. Uh, Dreyfus there from Seinfeld. She's the neighbor. She's dating a guy named Todd, I think. And they come home. They're opening the gifts. I guess they're coming back from a trip with their briefcases. They're yuppies. Looks like the toad overestimated the height of his living room ceiling. <laughs> the garage door's opening right now. He's got the chainsaw. It's my new favorite scene. Hey, Griswold. Where do you think you're going to put a tree that big? Bend over and I'll show you. You've got a lot of nerve talking to me like that, Griswold. I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, never, I never really just processed the humor of what just happened. So not only did he first insult him with the, with the same punchline, he then insulted his wife. That's good comedy. <laughs> oh, that was impressive right there. That was... Wow, that's why I watched that movie again. It's so good. But what about all the undiscovered comedy out there yet that you haven't watched? Oh, it's a scary world out there, Wes. Because you are you afraid you'll waste your time with a bad movie? It's yeah. I don't know what I mean. I, I do watch new movies when the kids have me do it. I just like like the kids the new Adam Sandler movie. Uh, there's someone with Jennifer Aniston that just came out. We watched it. I like yeah, that. Yeah. But I just I just prefer the same thing. Okay. I just find myself that the down. I'd rather go to Subway where I get a B minus sandwich. Then you go to a hole in the wall where it could be an A or an F. Gotcha. Sure thing. Oh, I love that seven. Just that number seven is a beautiful number, right? On a scale of one to ten, give you a seven sandwich. Okay. Now, the final thing you do, and then I'll let you get back to being awesome. You don't invoice clients. 
You take credit cards over the phone, which this is a thing that has, it, it takes me usually with a client two years of good coaching mm. to get a client who's a contractor to quit invoicing and to just tell the client, hey, um, if you want to hire me, it's going to be this much. So a debit card or credit card. But I have found that 90, 90, those are this, 95%, 95%, this is not, Andrew, you've seen this, 95% of services, and I'm talking about dentists, doctors, professionals, accountants, 95% of consumers will give you a credit card over the phone if you ask. And then it totally eliminates billing. Gabe, mm -hmm. I understand that you started not invoicing and it took you less than two years. Andrew must be a better teacher than me. How long did it take you to stop invoicing? Um, less than a week. Mm. Like Andrew helped me with some scripts that we were formulating. And um, in that script, he had written out exactly about capturing the credit card number. And we tweaked the script a little bit and didn't ever change that part. And we ran with it. And it was like shooting fish in a barrel. Um, every one of the employees that got onto the script was like, capturing credit card numbers faster than, than, than ever, and they kept running them into the accounting office. And, uh, I mean, it almost broke the system. I mean, it was that, that many that fast. And um, Accounts receivable is a thing of the past. You're collecting all the money up front now. Exactly. I mean, oh. I went into my accounting office manager's her office, and I said, so what are you going to do with all this free time that's going to be freed up by you not making collection calls? And she reviews. looked at me like I was crazy. She's going to get she reviews. Said, I never thought about that. Her exact words. She goes, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Yeah, I mean, so there's, there's people, win -win. There's people awesome. out there who have a full-time person devoted to collecting money. Can you please um, educate the listeners out there? Has it hurt your business in any way? No, not at all. I mean, it's amazing. People just want to give you that card number. They just know that it's part of the process, too. And when you script things and they understand, it's just like this is the process. Oh. Um I mean, they can pay with cash or check at the time of service. We don't have to run their card. We give them those three options. However, we have that card, and we're just not going to be collecting money 30, 60, or 90 days after a simple service like window cleaning. You know, it's just ridiculous. Are you telling me so, that you used to have to chase people for payment? Oh, my God. We're still chasing people. Before we implemented this, yeah, I've got a lady who we serviced her home who lived in – somewhere in South Carolina, and she ended up moving clear across the halfway over to where you're at. She's in Denver, and we're constantly collect, trying to collect money from her. She's always, we're always trying to count her on the phone, and mm. she's, now she's just dodging us. I mean, it's, it's pathetic. Let but, me ask, um, let yeah, me ask you forward, this. Man, no more. Let me ask you this here, final question I have for you. Are you coming to the conference in December, and if not, why do you hate me? Uh, well, I don't hate you, but I'm oh. not coming to the conference in December oh. because we just oh. came in, I think it was, uh, was September or October. We were oh. there just not too long ago. Oh, Shunda. Oh, okay. I, okay. That was a very passive aggressive. That was like a good multi-level sales question, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was a <laughs> good deflection. It's like, let me try again. Let me try that. Let me try my multi-level pitches. I've been working on these for a while. Let me try it. Here you go. Gabe, do you want to make money by convincing all your friends to auto ship everything? Or do you hate your family? You see, that that's the kind of questions I'm working on, Wes. <laughs> uh, you know, you, th those would be good questions for a, like a witness stand. You just walk them right into a corner and then boom, you got them. I'm trying to work on my potential legal career as a prosecutor. It's back up. Or as a multi-level guy. And i got to work on those questions. So, uh, um, Gabe, I'll end the show by saying give us the cell phone numbers of your 10 closest friends and we'll call them today and get a review. I'm just kidding. I appreciate you, Gabe. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. Hey, man, thank you so much. And again, your website, one more time. What is your website? It is windowninjas.com. Windowninjas.com. If you care about your family, you care about America, you care about strong kids, strong schools, strong roads. Clean windows. Clean windows. You care about our ability to protect ourselves as a nation. You must understand that our nation is able to fund its, itself by taxing people and printing money that we don't have. Now, Gabe does not help us print that money we don't have. That's, that's the good folks at the, the, at the Federal Reserve. They print that stuff. He's not a Gutenberg, but let me tell you what, this guy is paying his taxes. So if you want to defend our country, protect yourself, protect our family, stand up for what's right, you got to go to the website right now. That's windowninjas.com. 
Well, Gabe, you're a beautiful man. I appreciate you. you and, and you really, you just, you smell terrific today. Well, thank you for that, Clay. <laughs> All right, I man, you take care. As well. All right, you take care. Okay. See you, man. Thank you. All right, Thrive Nation, that is yet another edition of the Thrive Time Show on your radio and podcast download. Uh, Jason, you work with a lot of great clients out there. I do. And I'd like to give you an opportunity to brag on a couple of them because it is so easy for listeners to think that success is impossible. It's so easy to think that success is for somebody else. But we, you and I know, we know that success is for anybody who's simply willing to put their hand to the task at hand. This is somebody True. who's willing to implement the proven systems and strategies. Go ahead and brag on two of your clients who are just getting it done. So we've got um, Mr. Kevin Thomas with MultiClean, and they do um, commercial cleaning services, commercial janitorial services for like the greater Oklahoma area. Yep. And he is now the uh, highest and most reviewed commercial cleaner in all of Oklahoma. Come just, on now. Yeah, just Kevin opened Thomas. his uh, Oklahoma City location a couple months mm. ago. They're already rocking. He's he's fantastic, and then um, on top of that, we've got a uh, Marty Grisham with the Oklahoma Roof Nerds. Marty Grisham, a oh, yeah. great guy, a fantastic guy. He's branching out into the residential world now, so he's not just working on your commercial side. He's doing. He's your homes. a roofing guy. Mm -hmm. What's the name of his company? So it's the Oklahoma Roof Nerds or OK Roof Nerds, formerly known as Advanced Commercial Systems. So Oklahoma Roof Nerds, mm -hmm. check out that guy. Check him out. We're so excited about the success of the Thrive Nation. If you want to enter into the conversation about how to dramatically increase your compensation, don't be afraid. Just uh, go to thrivetimeshow.com and book your tickets to our next in-person Thrive Time Show workshop. And now without any further ado, three, two, one, boom. Boom. You have to record your calls or your business will fall off a cliff called mediocrity. You've got to record your calls or your business will fall off a cliff called mediocrity. Now, what's the company I recommend? I recommend Clarity Voice. How do you get a good deal? Go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash clarity. Thrivetimeshow.com forward slash clarity. Tim, um, you work in the call center. What's your final justification and reason why you think all the business owners out there should record their calls. Yeah, if you uh you want to make sure you actually have a good call and don't sound like you're having a panic attack while you're talking <laughs> to a customer, uh, it'd probably be a good idea to record your calls. Daisy, what's your final encouragement as a call center manager? How impossible would your job be without recording calls? What's your final tip? For the, for the listeners out there as to why they should record their calls. Well, I just look at Tim. He's like my personal testimony. We literally called him the nervous bomb diffuser for the first <laughs> six months he worked with me. And it's like he went from nervous bomb diffuser to Brad Pitt overnight. And but I used to be the fast-talking, confused guy at my first job. <laughs> and then they played my calls, and they're like, wow, you talk fast, and wow, you're confused. And so we all have some sort of dysfunction that we can't fix, right? Absolutely. If we can't hear the calls. Absolutely. So if you're out there today, again, go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash clarity. You know what they say. Go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash clarity. You know what they say. Go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash clarity. You know what they say. Uh, quit, quit saying that because I, I don't know what they say, but I know that I say go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash clarity. You know what they say. See a brawl to get that booty at him. <laughs> Lay it down or smack him, yak him. Thanks, that, that, that clears it up. Wow. <laughs> Hello, my name is Charles Kolaw with Kolaw Fitness. Uh, today I want to tell you a little bit about Clay Clark and how I know Clay Clark. Clay Clark has been my business coach since 2017. He's helped us grow from two locations to now six locations. We're planning to do seven locations in seven years and then franchise. And Clay has done a great job of helping us navigate anything that has to do with like running the business, building the systems, the checklists, the workflows, the audits, um, how to, how to um, navigate lease agreements, how to uh, buy property, um, how to uh, work with brokers and builders. This guy is just amazing. He's, he's This kind of guy has worked in every single industry. He's written books with like Lee Crockerell, head of Disney with the 40,000 cast members. Um, he's friends with like Mike Lindell. Um, he does Reawaken America tours where he does these tours all across the country where 10,000 or more people show up to some of these tours on the day-to-day -day, he does anywhere from uh, about 160 companies he's at the top he has a team of uh, business coaches videographers 
and graphic designers and web developers, and they run 160 companies every single week. So think of this guy with a team of business coaches running 160 companies. So in the weekly, he's running 160 companies. Um, every six to eight weeks, he's doing Reawaken America tours. Every six to eight weeks, he's also doing business conferences where 200 people show up, and he teaches people a 13-step proven system that he's done and worked with billionaires, helping them grow their companies. Um, so he's, I've seen guys from startups go from startup to being multimillionaires, um, teaching people how to get time freedom and financial freedom through the system critical thinking, document creation, um, making it, putting it into, uh, or organizing everything in their head to building into a, a franchisable, scalable business. Like one of his businesses has like 500 franchises. That's just one of the companies or brands that he works with. So amazing guy, Elon Musk kind, kind of like smart guy. Um, he kind of comes off sometimes as socially awkward, but he's so brilliant and he's taught me so much. When I say that, like, like Clay is like, he doesn't care what people think when you're talking to him. He cares about where you're going in your life and where he can get you to go. Um, and that's what I like most about him. He's like a, a good coach. A coach isn't just making you feel good all the time. A coach is actually helping you get to the best you. And Clay has been an amazing business coach. Through the course of that, we became friends. Um, my, I was really most impressed with him is when I was shadowing him one time. Um, we went into a business deal and listened to it. I, I got to shadow and listen to it. And when we walked out, I knew that he could make millions on the deal. And they were super excited about working with him. And he told me, he's like, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to turn it down um, because he knew it was going to harm the common good of people in the long run. And uh, the guy's integrity um, just really wowed me. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes to see that this guy, his, he doesn't, his highest desire was to do what's right. And um, uh, anyways, just, just, just an amazing man. So anyways, impacted me a lot. Um, he's helped navigate. Anytime I've gotten nervous or worried about uh, how to run the company or uh, you know, navigating competition and, 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 and an economy that's like, I remember we got closed down for three months. He helped us navigate on how to stay open, how to, how to get back open, how to um, uh, just survive through all the COVID shutdowns, lockdowns, because our clubs were all closed for three months and you have $350,000 of bills you've got to pay and uh, we have no accounts receivable. He helped us navigate that. Um, and of course we were conservative enough that we could afford to, to take that on for a period of time. But it was, uh, anyways, great man. I'm very imp impressed with him. So Clay, thank you for everything you're doing. And um, I encourage you if, you, if you haven't ever worked with Clay, work with Clay, he's gonna help magnify you. And there's nobody I have ever met that has the ability to work as hard as he does. He probably sleeps four, maybe six hours a day and literally the rest of the time he's working and he can outwork everybody in the room every single day and and he loves it so anyways um this is charles cola with cola fitness thank you clay um, and anybody out there that's wanting to work with clay um, it's a great great uh, opportunity to ever work with him so you guys have a blessed one this is charles cola we'll see you guys bye bye hi i'm aaron antis with shaw homes i first heard about clay through a mortgage lender here in town who had told me what a great job he had been doing for them and i actually noticed he was driving a lamborghini all of a sudden so i was willing to listen uh, in my career i've sold a little over 800 million dollars in real estate so honestly, I thought I kind of knew everything about marketing and um, homes. And then I met Clay and my perception of what I knew and what I could do definitely changed. After doing 800 million in sales over a 15 year career, I really thought I knew what I was doing. I've been managing a large team of salespeople for the last 10 years here with Shaw Homes. And I mean, we've been a company that's been in business for 35 years. We've become one of the largest builders in the Tulsa area, and uh, that was without Clay. So when I came to know Clay, I really thought, man, there's not much more I need to know, but I'm willing to listen. The interesting thing is our internet leads from our website has actually in a four month period of time has gone from somewhere around 10 to 15 leads in a month to 180 internet leads in a month. Just from the few things that he's shown us how to implement that I honestly probably never would have come up with on my own. So uh, I got a lot of good things to say about the system that Clay put in place with us. And it's just been an incredible experience. I am very glad that we met and had the opportunity to work with Clay. 
So the interaction with the team and with Clay on a weekly basis is honestly very enlightening. One of the things that I love about Clay's perspective on things is that he doesn't come from my industry. He's not somebody who's in the home building industry. I've listened to all the experts in my field. Our company has paid for me to go to seminars, international builder shows, all kinds of places where I've had the opportunity to learn from the experts in my industry. But the thing that I found working with Clay is that he comes from such a broad spectrum of working with so many different types of businesses that he has a perspective that's difficult for me to gain because I get so entrenched in what I do, I'm not paying attention to what other leading industry experts are doing. And Clay really brings that perspective for me. It is very valuable time every week when I get that hour with him. From my perspective, the reason that any business owner who's thinking about hooking up with Thrive needs to definitely consider it is because the results that we've gotten in a very short period of time are honestly monumental. It has really exceeded my wildest expectation of what he might be able to do. I came in skeptical because I'm very pragmatic and as I've gone through the process over just a few months, I've realized it's probably one of the best moves we've ever made. I think a lot of people probably feel like they don't need a business or marketing consultant because they maybe are a little bit prideful and like to think they know everything. I know that's how I felt coming in. I mean, we're a big company that's definitely one of the largest in town. And so we kind of felt like we knew what we were doing. And I think for a lot of people, they let their ego get in the way of listening to somebody that might have a better or different perspective than theirs. I would just really encourage you if you're thinking about working with Clay. I mean, the thing is, it's month to month. Go give it a try and see what happens. I think in the 35 year history of Shaw Homes, this is probably the best thing that's happened to us. And I know if you give them a shot, I think you'll feel the same way. I know for me, the thing I would have missed out on if I didn't work with Clay is I would have missed out on literally an 1800% increase in our internet leads. Going from 10 a month to 180 a month, that would have been a huge financial decision to just decide not to give it a shot. I would absolutely recommend Clay Clark to anybody who's thinking about working with somebody in marketing. I would skip over anybody else you were thinking about and I would go straight to Clay and his team. I guarantee you're not going to regret it because we sure haven't. My name is Danielle Sprick and I am the founder of D. Sprick Realty Group here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. After being a stay-at-home mom for 12 years and my three kids started school and they were in school full-time, I was at a crossroads and trying to decide what, what do I want to do. My degree and my background is in education, but after being a mom and staying home and all of that, I just didn't have a passion for it like I once did. My husband suggested real estate. He's a home builder, so real estate and home building go hand in hand. and. We just rolled with it. I love people, I love working with people, I love the building relationships, um, but one thing that was really difficult for me was the business side of things. The processes and the advertising and marketing, I knew that I did not have what I needed to make that what it should be. So I reached out to Clay at that time and he and his team have been extremely instrumental in helping us build our brand, um, help market our business, our agents, the homes that we represent. Everything that we do uh, is a direct line from Clay and his team and all that they've done for us. We launched our brokerage, our real estate brokerage, eight months ago. And in that time, we've gone from myself and one other agent to just this week, we signed on our 16th agent. Um, we have been blessed with the fact that we right now have just over 10 million impending transactions. 
Three years ago, I never would have even imagined that I would be in this role that I'm in today, building a business, having 16 agents, but I have to give credit where credit's due. And Clay and his team and the business coaching that they've offered us has been huge. It's been instrumental in what we're doing. Don't ever limit your vision. When you dream big, big things happen. I started a business because I couldn't work for anyone else. I do things my way. Um, I do what I think is in the best interest of the patient. I don't answer to insurance companies. I don't answer to large corporate organizations. I answer to my patient and that's it. My thought when I opened my clinic was I can do this all myself. Uh, I don't need additional outside help in many ways. I, I mean, I, I went to medical school, I can figure this out. But it was a very, very steep learning curve. Within the first six months of opening my clinic, I had a $63,000 embezzlement. Um, I lost multiple employees. Clay helped us weather the storm of some of the things that are just a lot of people experience, especially in the medical world. He was instrumental in helping with the specific written business plan. He's been instrumental in hiring good quality employees, using the processes that he outlines for getting in good talent, which is extremely difficult. He helped me in securing the business loans. He helped me with uh, web development and search engine optimization. We've been able to really keep a steady stream of clients coming in uh, because they found us on the web. With everything that I encountered, everything that I experienced, I, I quickly learned it is worth every penny to have someone in your team that can walk you through and even avoid some of the pitfalls that are almost invariable in starting your own business. I'm Dr. Chad Edwards and I own Revolution Health and Wellness Clinic. The Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the highest and most reviewed business workshops on the planet. You can learn the proven 13-point uh, business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get rich quick, walk on hot coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying, and I want you to Google uh, the Z66 auto auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same systems that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever and we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you.